Advent. We're in the season of Advent this morning. And this is the second Sunday of Advent. And it's the reflection, they light the candle, don't they? And I think it's a certain coloured candle in the Catholic Church, but it, it reflects peace. And so I thought that was a good theme to bring this morning as I, uh, I'm just stepping in for folks this morning. So our focus and our thoughts this morning then is on peace. And Christ is our peace. Listen, I read it earlier, but Isaiah 9, 6, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. His name, well, a name reflects your character. And what a character Jesus has. He is the one who is wonderful. He's Counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting Father. And he is the Prince of Peace. What a name. What a name. I'm just Chris. <laughs> full of faults and full of problems. But Jesus is God himself who comes at the time that we are waiting for in Advent as Emmanuel, God with us, born of the Virgin Mary. But his name means so many things and so many facets to it. But this morning, we're focusing on the Prince of Peace. He is the Prince of Peace this morning, the one who was promised as this incredible name. Uh, Lennon wrote this in his song. He said, war is over. Give peace a chance. Okay? Peace will never be fully reached through humanity. Humanity is flawed. We always deviate from peace. We want war. And we fight and we bicker and we want to win. And we are greedy. And so war is inevitable. And particularly in the Middle East, they want peace packages. They want the ceasefires. They want this and that and the other. But I want to tell you this morning, peace will never come into the Middle East until they receive Jesus. And in fact, until Jesus comes again, who is the Prince of Peace? The Bible tells us that he will come again, and he will rule, and he will bring peace to the Middle East. He will rule from Jerusalem. He will rule with a rod of iron, the Bible says, and he will bring peace, and every knee shall bow and tongue confess that he is Lord. Only he can bring the peace that is needed there. Okay, man cannot do it. For us, peace is a fundamental need in the heart. Maybe this morning you are in turmoil. Maybe this morning you're lacking peace. And for us it's a fundamental need and God knows that. We lost it in the garden with Adam and Eve. Peace went out the window and man took his fate upon himself and ever since man has been in turmoil and at war and has no peace. There is a temporary peace often when circumstances are good and they're going fine but they don't always last. And so we are always pursuing peace. We want it, we need it, we desire it. People are on pills for it. They're in the doctors, they're having tranquilizers, all kinds of things to find peace. But this morning, there's only one that can bring peace, and it's the Lord Jesus Christ, and it's faith in him. And so we look around us and we see that the only way we can function in love, in harmony, and with each other is if we've got peace in the heart. If you've got no peace, friends, and you're not at peace with yourself, then you're in turmoil. You cannot move towards people in love. It's generally criticism and harsh and you're judgmental. But when we're at peace with God and we're at peace with ourselves, we can start to connect and we can be a help and a source of peace to others. And so we need that peace this morning. Okay, and God knows very much that we need that. And let me just say, let me just read this text to us and let us have a few thoughts on it, just to start with. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 3.16 May the Lord himself, who is the source of our peace, give you peace, listen, at all times and in every way, the Lord be with you all. Isn't that a wonderful scripture? That absolutely transforms fixed me this week when I was thinking about this. It says the Lord himself, okay, full cover. So we're thinking about the Lord himself, who is the source of our, our peace, give you peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with you all. So first of all, 
let's think about that. The Lord himself, he is our peace. He is called the God of peace in 1 Thessalonians 5.23. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. That means the God of peace can separate you, sanctify you, transform your heart and transform your life as you go through life, as he walks with you, as you connect with him through prayer, as you read his word, as you feed upon him, as you meditate upon him in the walk of life and the troubles that you're facing, he will give you his peace. He will transfuse it, he will infuse it, should I say, into your heart as you walk with him because he is the God of peace. And he is able to separate you from the things of this world and the troubles that you're going through. That's what sanctification means, setting you apart. When I think about that, that means I'm special. That means that you are special. That God is taking his time to separate you, to work upon you. And not only just to work upon you, but to keep giving you his peace. And as you keep looking to him, as we were earlier, the eye, open the eyes of our heart. As we look to the Lord through our heart and connect with him, that peace is there because he is the God of peace. He's the source of it. It comes from him. Numbers 6, 9, this is the priestly blessing upon the people, the Jewish people in the old days, in the Old Testament, the priests were to lift up their hands over the people and pronounce God's blessing on them. And part of that blessing was, may the Lord lift his countenance, his face upon you, and to give you peace. The shalom, really, that's what that means, to give you his shalom. And if you do a study on the word of shalom, it's incredible. You know, the shalom of God, the peace of God, that transcends understanding. So he's, they're pronouncing the peace upon the people of God. They're putting his name on him. That's what they said. God said to do to the priest. Put my name on them. So the priest pronounced the name of the Lord over the people. And part of that is his peace. And maybe this morning you're thinking, well, pastor, you're preaching and banging on about peace. I've got no peace. My circumstances, you don't understand. Well, you don't understand my circumstances either. And I don't understand your circumstances. God does. And God's the one that we look to. Don't look to me and I don't look to you. I look to God. And he's the source. And if we keep our eyes on him, then his peace will come. But if we look at each other and judge with each other, then we've got problems. Isaiah 26, 3, love this one. Thou wilt keep him in, listen, perfect peace. Wow, is it a perfection peace, a perfect peace? Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Just let the word of God just speak to you this morning. Just let the pure word of God, you know, a source of water comes from a certain place and it can get muddy as it comes further down the line. And as you start to drink from the muddier water, get to the source. And the source is the word of God. The pure word of God. And this is what he's saying to you this morning. Thou, God, thou, you, will keep him, you, whoever you are, this morning, in perfect balance and perfect peace. Whose mind, your mind, your thinking, your thoughts, is up and down and all over the place. And you're looking at this and that. Who stayed on thee, on me, I will keep him in perfect peace. Why? Because he's trusting in me. Are we trusting in God this morning? Or are we looking to circumstances and the things around us that cause us to quake and fear and worry and rob us, rob us of our peace? And God knows that you need that peace and so does the devil. And the Bible says that he's a thief, a liar and a cheat and a robber, and he wants to thieve from you and steal your peace and have you in turmoil this morning. Look to God. Secondly, privilege. It's a privilege. It's a possession, and it's a privilege that God gives his children. Yeah, that's the peace that God gives us, and it's not, nothing to do with circumstances this morning. It's to do with God, to do with him. And um, I read a story, I think it was this morning or last night, and it was a, quite a strange story, and it's called Quaking Aspens. I thought, what's this? It got my attention. So I started to read it, and it's this couple who had gone to Michigan, and they'd gone up there on the higher 
peninsula and we're walking around in the, in the, in the, in the trees and the forests and, and the husband was taken by one tree. And this tree had these leaves that were fluttering and quivering and moving around. And uh, he looked at the other trees and they were, the trees on the leaves were solid, never move. And he said to his wife, he said, look at that tree. He said, all the rest are not moving. And she said, oh yes, it's a quaking aspens tree. Its leaves are very light and every breeze and little gentle blowing moves the leaves. So he went home that night and thought about it and he said, how strange. He said, all the people around me seem to be sturdy and strong. They seem to have no problems and nothing quakes them. They're going through life just easy. And I just seem to, every little breeze and every blowing wind, I seem to quake and quiver and move and shake. He said, I'm just like that tree. He said, but I realise through the scriptures my source of strength is in the peace of God and in the knowledge of God in my life. And that's where your strength is this morning. People might be strong and seem strong, but they're not really. Our strength is in the source, which is God this morning. And then there's another one in Mark 4, 28. I just want to read that to us because it's another story. Maybe you'll have to follow me with the Bible. Mark 4, 38, should I say. Fantastic story. And it goes on in the same day, verse 35, on the same day when evening had come, he said to them, let us go across to the other side. Now when they had left the multitude, they took him along in the boat as he was. And other little boats were also with them. A great windstorm arose and the waves beat against the boat so that it was already filling. But he was asleep in the stern on a pillow. And they awake him and said, Teacher, do you not care? <laughs> do you not care? <laughs> we are perishing. Listen, he arose. <laughs> he arose. And he spoke to the winds and the sea and said, Be still. Still, and there was a great calm. Hallelujah. Jesus in the boat, sending his disciples on a mission. So they weren't going to sink. Why weren't they going to sink? Because he was in the boat with them. But he was asleep. But then he goes on and say, he said to them, why were you so fearful and afraid? Why do you have no faith? So the Lord often rebukes us through the circumstances we're going through because we've got to learn lessons. Really got to learn some lessons. Whatever you are struggling with today, we want to out of it, we want away from it. It's, 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 don't you care, God? I'm per we're perishing in this. He seems to be asleep. But there comes a point when he does arise. Hallelujah. Jesus rose from the dead. <laughs> Hallelujah. He rose out of it all and is victorious and glorious and he says I've overcome the world don't be afraid little flock I am with you so he arose and he spoke to the winds and the waves and said be still only Jesus can do that friends only the Lord can bring peace in your heart and your life you might be in turmoil and just thinking God isn't there he doesn't care he's nowhere but it was the pleading of the disciples Lord Lord help us that awoke him often our prayers and our pleading with the Lord in our circumstances awakens him. And in his time, and in his way, he'll answer. And you'll find that all of a sudden there's a peace and there's a calm. But he does it first inside. That's where he needs to work it. So he lets the circumstances roll on for a little bit. And we have to fight and jostle in prayer and learn to get hold of God and just, God, help, help. And in his time, and he says, that's enough. I'm going to step in. And he does. And then he says to you, why was you doubting? Where's your faith? I've had that said to me so many times. And I go around the same mulberry bush sometimes and come back to it again. <laughs> Once God's answered a prayer, you can always look back and say, well, God, help me there. He'll help me now. Peace be still. And maybe the Lord can say, peace be still in your heart this morning. And maybe he'll, ch he'll challenge you and say, why are you doubting me, child? Why have you taken your eyes off me this morning? Do you think I'm asleep? I am aware of all that you're going through. 
and I will answer you in my time, my way. Okay, hallelujah. So, some thoughts there to think about. Quaking aspens, are you one of those trees that you just quake and shake at every breeze and every slight wind? Or are you going to give it to God and say, Lord, my mind is trusting you and therefore I'm in that peace, no matter what's happening this morning. It takes time to learn that, doesn't it? It takes time to walk with that. But let me tell you something, God is patient with you. <laughs> oh, God's been patient with, patient with me. And I'm sure he'll be patient with you and bring you through. <clears throat> so listen, yes, the disciples were in peril, but Jesus was with them. And did you know it said little ships with them? Did you know that? Sometimes we overlook that, that all these little ships were following the disciples and Jesus. And so he brought peace so that they could have peace as well. So God will bring peace in your life so that you can bring peace in somebody else's life. So that those around you might feel the sense of peace because you're at peace, because you're the Christian, you're the one that's in the midst of them. Paul did that on the boat when he was in peril on the sea. He took control. He took command and he said, none of you are going to lose your lives because the God of heaven has spoken to me. Not one of you. He took command and peace was in the hearts of those people, those unbelievers. He said, now eat food and be strengthened. That's how God can use you in the circumstances and situations as he works in your life. It isn't just for you. It's for those little boats that are around you. Amen. They were all saved. They were all safe because Jesus was there working in his people. Amen. We need peace at all times in every way. So we're reminded that the Lord is the source of peace. A river starts its flow from a mountain. It starts high up when the snow melts and it comes down, starts to trickle and widens and grows and has estuaries flowing off from it. The source of our peace is God. He's in heaven. Christ is there at the right hand of the Father and he's bestowing upon us peace as we look to him this morning. Yes, we need peace, it says there, in every situation and every encounter of life that we go through even in the small things yeah we tend to think that our troubles are in the big things but very often they're in the small things in everyday life that we encounter maybe the person at work is driving you mad maybe there's somebody that in the church who you're struggling with maybe there is a situation at home maybe there's a financial problem it's all different areas that we need God's peace in I was in a situation this week that's been ongoing, a problem, for 18 months, maybe more, two years. And um, I had to go and speak with a person and actually go and stand my ground. And now they're a lot cleverer than me, a lot more wise than me, a lot more wily than me. And have a, a lot, you know, they could twist me around in knots, they're very clever. But you know, I had a word from the Lord. I always get a word from the Lord in prayer. And it was, the Lord said, it was through a daily read, he says, do not be afraid of them. For I am the Lord your God, I am with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. And so, in fear of going to see the people on their ground, on their terms, I had a word from the Lord and I kept reading it as I was going. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be afraid of them. For I am the Lord your God. I am with you. And that brought peace in the turmoil. And I got a deal in my favour. Hallelujah. Because God was with me. Yeah? Whatever situation you're in, it might be big, small. The Lord is with you and can bring you peace in every situation if you look to him. What are you going through? What's the situation you're facing? Are you flapping? Are you, are you, are you, are you failing? Look to the Lord this morning. So, I just quickly want to give you the formula. We always want a formula, don't we? So here's the formula for the perfect harmony working of the Trinity. It's this. The Father has decreed peace. Right? The Son has purchased it for us. And the Holy Spirit brings it to us into our hearts and lives this morning. So God is the source. Jesus has procured it through his death on the cross and his resurrection and his peace, his peace. 
And the Holy Spirit infuses it into your heart as you look to him. So finally, just a couple of scriptures. Acts 10, 36. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, proclaim, preaching peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. Romans 5, 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And Colossians, this is it, peace through the blood of Jesus. Colossians 1, 20. Having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him reconciling all things unto himself, by him, I say, whether things on heaven or on earth. God has brought peace through Jesus. God has brought peace and offers peace through Jesus Christ. If you want peace this morning, come through Jesus, because Jesus said, I am the way, the only way to the Father. And it's through him, through his death, through his work on the cross, that we come by faith and we come and find the peace with God as he forgives us, as he puts us right with himself. The blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin and the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in our hearts and lives and keeps putting peace, keeps putting peace, keeps putting peace because we leak, we fail, we falter, but he keeps putting his peace, he keeps putting his peace in as we look to him because God is the source and the source never gives up, it never stops flowing. Hallelujah. Maybe this morning we've chucked a few bricks in the well. <laughs> Maybe it's got dammed up further upstream. Maybe some kids have been playing and put a few rocks in and started swimming in the water and the water stopped coming down. <laughs> the source is still there, it's still flowing. You've got to take the rocks out, you've got to go back up river and kick the things out that are stopping the flow of the word. What is it this morning that you're stopping you? Isaac in the Old Testament had to go and find the wells that the enemies had chucked rocks in and filled up. There was water there, but they couldn't get to it. They had to take out all the rocks and the rubbish and the debris that the enemy had put in. And then there was water. What is in the well? What is upstream that's stopping it? God's peace and his love and his mercy is there. And you might be saying this morning, I can't feel it. I can't see it. Look with the eyes of the heart this morning and take out the things that are stopping the flow. Repentance, faith. Peace is the opposite of war and fractions. Dis <laughs> discontent, discord. Peace brings concord, togetherness and harmony. And the wonderful greeting that we have to give each other is this. Peace. And that's the Bible says, greet each other with the peace. Shalom. And so that means peace to you. Peace to you. Peace to each other. Maybe there's something that's stopping the flow of peace is enmity. Okay? Enmity. Maybe there is disharmony. Then that might be the rocks and the dam upstream. And you've got to deal with it. For me, dealing with a situation and not being afraid of them brought a wonderful reconciliation. Brought something totally different, what was unexpected. God wasn't just interested in the thing that I was focusing on, he got a bigger plan. And maybe the bigger plan for you is harmony with each other, peace with each other, forgiveness with each other, and then the flow of peace will flow again. Shall we pray? Lord, this morning we thank you for your word. Thank you that, God, you are the source of peace. And, Jesus, you're the one that died on the cross to bring us that peace. And, Holy Spirit, you're the one who infuses it into our hearts this morning, indwelling us, feeding us, guiding us, and just blessing us this morning. So, Lord, may we be in the shalom of God. Amen. And I speak over you, church, the shalom of God. Whatever your need is this morning, may the shalom of God, the, the peace that passes all understanding, God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mind to be on you this morning and in every situation that you're facing right now. And just to recognize that he's with you and it's not going to go on forever.
it's not going to continue because he will arise and will speak to the wind to the sea he will speak to that problem and that problem and he will say enough is enough thus far no farther and you'll be in peace amen take that as the word from the Lord this morning in your situations in your life amen